Hey what's up gamers, it's about time for another update of my NES game Cold and Starving which you can as usual download for free from the links in the description. This time there are really no noticeable changes, except that the game might be even slower in some places. I even hesitated to make this video. So what happened? Instead of adding new content, I managed to do this. Look at the free space before and this is what it looks like now. Now I have almost 32 kilobytes free. Look at this bank where I had cutscene and title screen graphics. It used to be completely full, but not anymore. It's still the same game, I didn't cut out any content. So how did I manage to do all this? I realized that I had a really stupid thing in my game. Every tile set has the same letters repeated over and over again. This character set is almost 1 kilobyte, so it's a bit too much to waste. I've checked other UN ROM games and no game duplicates the characters like I do. Prince of Persia, for example, has nothing else but graphics in the first banks and only one instance of letters. Of course, when you play the game, uh, these letters are inserted at the bottom of the tileset that's in RAM. I don't know where I got this idea from that I have to fill the entire CHR RAM in one go. But now I had to fix my stupid mess and force my game to behave in a way a decent game should. I removed the letters from all the tile sets and save them in a separate CHR file. Contrary to Prince of Persia, I load this small tile set at the top of the background tile set in RAM. Below the character rows, now I can place any tiles I want. For instance, when I go indoors, I can fill remaining 13 rows with uh, indoor tiles. So basically all the environment tile sets now are a bit smaller and theoretically could be loaded much faster. I also had to fix all the maps and villager dialogues because the character values have changed. I even had to write a python script for that. I think I saved almost 4 kilobytes by removing duplicate letters. But that's not a big deal compared to what happened next. I had a suggestion on my github discussion board by a guy named 8bithero to try out LZ4 compression for the graphics. LZ4 is a part of a family of algorithms created by Lempel and Ziv in 1977. Unlike the RLE algorithm that I used to compress my name tables, this one is much much more complex and should compress the data more efficiently while remaining really fast. But will it be fast enough for the NES? Actually I hadn't really planned to use a compression for my graphics. But since 8-Bit Hero kindly provided a little guide how to do it, I thought why not to give it a try. Basically it would involve compressing a binary file with LZ4 command line tool and then stripping 11 first and 4 last bytes from the compressed file. Then in my game I should use a routine from the NES lib library to extract this compressed data into the RAM. As far as I know, NES lib is kinda required if you want to write your NES game in C. But since I'm writing my game in assembly, I don't really use it. And because of that, it wasn't that easy to put this routine into my game. The routine is somewhat dependent on the NES lib. Mainly it needed the subroutine stack implementation, which I obviously didn't use. I just lazily copied missing subroutines into the LZ4 routine file and then just included it into my main assembly file. Sure, it's a pretty ugly way to do it. Probably I should have created separate object files and linked them together. <laughs> but I didn't bother. I had to put some additional variables to the page 0 of the NES RAM. And obviously I wasn't very happy about that. So as a first test to see if this routine is worth the effort, I tried to compress the intro cutscene graphics. 
I stripped out the necessary bytes, put everything together, built my ROM, but when I ran the game and hit the start button, the game surprisingly got stuck in a loop, while it endlessly pooped out some random stuff into the CHRM. At that moment I thought that this would probably will never work, and I should ditch this routine and move on to work on something else. But when I checked the memory tool, I saw that by compressing the style set, I got almost 4 kilobytes of free space. So that motivated me not to give up. I started reading my code and noticed that I used jump instruction to call the decompression routine. So I replaced it with jump to subroutine instruction. And what do you know? The endless writing to the RAM finally stopped. But the data in the RAM was still not correct. Then I tried to run the decompression routine step by step. And I realized that by copying and pasting the parameter stack subroutines, I missed the second part of the routine pop AX. And this second part had the return from subroutine instruction. So now pop AX without the Return instruction would simply continue its execution into a next subroutine. So I fixed my mistake, built the ROM, and boom, the game finally loads the compressed graphics correctly. So the biggest pro of this endeavor was that I managed to free up a lot of valuable space. The con was that the LZ4 code was kinda huge and took almost all the free space in the main bank. I guess you win some and lose some. So yeah, this looked really promising, so I quickly went and compressed other tilesets. Except for the two, the boss and the crash site tilesets. That's because in order to successfully compress and extract the graphics, the data file has to be aligned to 256 bytes, or a single row in a tileset. The LC4 routine is only able to write complete rows. These two tilesets were a bit different, so I had to leave them be. Then I thought, what about the name tables that I compressed with RLE before? Could I compress them with LZ4 instead and save more space? And I definitely could. To do that, I had to save the screen in a binary format instead of assembly. And I had to tell the routine to use a different memory address and that it would be only 4 rows, since the size of a single screen is 1 kilobyte. Unfortunately, it didn't seem that LZ4 compression was significantly better than RLE. Sure, it saved a few bytes, uh, but the loading was much slower. This was very noticeable in the cutscenes, where I had to extract the screen data twice. As I mentioned before, the LZ4 routine used all the remaining space in the main bank so I had to free some. This time I noticed that I had this DPCM sample of a howl that I no longer use. So I just simply launched Famous Studio and removed that sample. But what I forgot that a couple days ago the update manager updated the Famous Studio application. And when I exported the music data and built my ROM, I noticed that music started glitching. I realized that now I need to update the Family Studio engine as well. Oh boy. Luckily everything went well. Except the new Family Studio engine took an extra byte from the page zero. As if it wasn't enough. So yeah, now I updated the engine to 4.2.1. And also I freed some space in the main bank. Then I still wanted somehow to compress those two remaining tilesets. So I decided to change the sprite tile structure. So I don't have to load those tiles to the right side of the tileset in the RAM. I rearranged my main sprite tileset like this. Now I can just load a few rows below the werewolf tiles. This could be other animals, villagers or even the boss. To restore the main tiles, technically I don't have to reload the whole 4 kilobytes of graphics. I could just load the rows with the main animals. This change also made me to go through the game and fix all the sprite values. So it took quite a lot of time. After that I no longer needed complex routines to load the tiles 
to the right side of the tile set. I actually removed all the loading stuff for uncompressed graphics. All graphics now are loaded with the LZ4 routine. One thing still bugged me, and it was how sluggishly the name tables were extracted. I tried to reduce the compression levels, but it didn't seem to help a lot. There still were hiccups in the music when I tried to put in a new background during cutscenes. Maybe I should bring back the RLE. Let's do it. Now if we compare the space before and after, there is no significant difference. But there are no more hiccups during intro and outro cutscenes. So now I use the LC4 to compress my tile sets and RLE to compress the screens. Since now I have plenty of space and a nice structure for tiles, I definitely gonna put more content. And if you're curious what I'm going to add next, then make sure you subscribe my channel. As usual, shout out goes to my awesome channel members, Retro Sorcas, Tim Beimer and Christopher Vigren. If you also want to appear on the wall of awesome and support my work, you can join my channel membership. So yeah, thanks for watching till the end and I will see you next time. Bye bye.